Hello one and all and welcome to another episode from The Cinema. I am your host Josh Rudolph and today I'm going to be taking a look at one of the newest horror movies to come out and also one of my most anticipated horror movies to come out in a very long time, Dr. Sleep. Now Dr. Sleep was written, directed, and edited by Mike Flanagan who some of you might know as the director of, such, of some of the best horror movies to come out recently like uh, Hush, uh, Gerald's Game, and Netflix's uh, series The Haunting of Hill House. And this time he takes up the reign from Stanley Kubrick as this is a sequel to The Shining. And the story continues telling Danny's story from the first film, uh, this time played by Ian McGregor. Um, he's now an alcoholic, he's working as an orderly at a nursing home, and now there's a girl that has uh, shining powers just like he does, but there's a group of crazy people that, you know, want to, you know, eat her energy so that way they can live forever and stuff. So not good for necessarily either of them. We go to the house, uh, to the hotel from the first film. It goes crazy places. And I freaking love this movie. This film was fantastic on all levels. It was amazing. One of the first things that a lot of people are going to be both confused and intrigued about it is that it's a sequel to a Stanley Kubrick movie that, you know, was one of the best horror films of all time. So there's very clearly some pressure on Mike Flanagan to deliver something that not only Shining fans will enjoy, but also Stephen King fans will enjoy. Because this film also has to adapt Stephen King's book, which is a sequel to his book, The Shining, which is very different from Stanley Kubrick's film. So he had a really interesting, tough act to balance. But personally, I believe that he balanced it out quite well. Because not only are there Kubrickisms in the film, but Mike Flanagan makes the film his own, which is the best thing for the film. And I'm very, very, very glad that he did that because if it was just him copying Kubrick's style the entire film trying to do it like how Kubrick would have done it the film would not have worked it would have failed because it's a style that you really can't emulate yourself unless you are Kubrick so I'm very very glad that he made the film his own while still giving those nods to Stanley Kubrick's original film. Ewan McGregor as always he is just he is a god. He's fantastic in this film. Uh, the character arc that he goes on his journey, um, all the demons from his past, both literally and metaphorically, um, they're dealt with fantastically. He gives another standout performance, just like in the rest of his career. If there's any one reason to go see this film, it's because of him. Because you need more Ian McGregor in your life. I don't know why you wouldn't. But it's not only him, but the uh, actress um, that plays the girl in this film, I don't remember her name because I'm horrible with names. She is absolutely fantastic. One of the best child performances I have seen in a very, very long time time and the writing for her is also done very well um, that's another thing that Flanagan did really well was that he wrote this film as well as directed and edited it so he very much had a huge task to undertake but again he did it very well if you've seen any of his other films you know exactly what you're going to get into with this one thing I was very worried about with this film was actually having a real villain to, per se because in the first film it was more like the demons and the psychologicalness of what the hotel brought on to Jack um, and his family no real actual villain of the film and that makes sense but now we have Rebecca Ferguson and her group of followers in this film who are actually the villains of the film wanting to like you know kill anyone that has the shining suck up their energy so that way they can live forever. I was very worried about having them in the film but to my surprise they were actually really good and quite intimidating and one of the best parts of the film and one of the most interesting parts of the film as well. I was not expecting that at all so the fact that a horror movie was able to have an actual good and interesting villain while still having other psychological scares was really impressive and I did not expect that and it was one of my favorite parts of the film. One thing to definitely know about this film is that it is not a jump scare fest by any means of it. Now there are of course jump scares here and there but like very few and very far between and they feel earned whenever they appear. The scares of the film are much more psychological based, much more slow burn building up if you understand what I mean. If you've seen any of Flanagan's other horror films, that's exactly the kind of thing that he does. He rather wants you to feel the psychological terror that the characters are feeling rather than like, oh, there's a slow music building up and boom, jump scare. Ooh, that's, that's scary. It's scary for like two seconds because you, you know, you hear loud noises, but that's about it. But Flanagan, he makes you feel scared in your mind, just like the characters do for the situations that they're in, giving you a psychological feeling of terror that really a lot of horror films do not do. And it is similar to how Kubrick did the scares in The Shining, much more psychological building tension rather than, you know, jump scares here and there. The overall story of the film, it's very interesting because uh, the first two acts, they feel like a very separate story uh, from the whole 
shining as as a whole just seeing where danny goes and like um the places that they go to is very interesting but then the third act we go um, back to the hotel from the first film which was something that i was very surprised by and i thought that was a really interesting thing that they did because in the if you know how the book ends very different from how the movie ends so I'm very surprised that they actually went back there but also going back there and seeing like you know how much it like affects danny changes him and everything like that it's really good and if you were worried about the whole film being like you know filled with shining references every every single place that's not what it is the hotel doesn't even show up until the third act of the film the first two acts is its own thing which is great for it it's its own thing it doesn't try to rely on nostalgia or anything like that from the uh, past film it wants to be its own film first before giving you those hits of nostalgia and when it goes to the hotel ooh, it turns up the nostalgia uh, levels to an 11 and it is fantastic there are some characters that do appear from the shining i'm not going to say who but like one that's not a big spoiler is danny's mom um she appears in the beginning but this time she's now played by shelly duvall like you know dh it's a different actress she looks similar to her but she also is obviously not her so it is a bit jarring at first to see her like not be her but it's a quick thing that I got used to and it was something surprising and this does happen to like pretty much all the other characters that appear from the first film um, they're not played by the same actors for very obvious reasons they're not de-aged um, it is something to get used to and some people could possibly be disappointed by that but I think just get over it because you know, people are quite old these days and de-aging can only go so far. I don't really think there's many flaws I can think of with this film. There might be a couple of times where the pacing just goes the tiniest bit of slow just at the most random times. Not saying it's a very, it's not an overall problem at all, but it's just like there's like a part here or there that's like, okay, this is dragging it just a little bit. Can we pick it up a bit? Then it picks it up and everything is fine just like it was before. It's only it's just brief moments here and there, but otherwise the film is paced fantastically. It's written, it's directed, it's acted amazingly. It's one of the best films of the year. If you haven't seen Doctor Sleep yet, I highly recommend it. If you've seen The Shining, then you're gonna love this. And if you're a fan of horror, definitely go see this. This is a very different horror film that has come out in the mainstream in a very long time, because most horror films, jump scare fests, don't care for them, not that scary. This, scary, and I very much enjoy it, and I highly recommend you go see it. And I'm going to give Dr. Sleep a 9 out of 10. It is one of the best films of the year. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. Ian McGregor, like, that's that's enough of a reason to go see the film, right? And if not, then it's also a Shining sequel, so that's another reason. And it's just a good film, which is another good reason to go see it. So that was my review of Dr. Sleep. I hope that you all very much enjoyed and that you go see the film. And I hope that you subscribe to Mason Cable Network to check out new episodes every week. And make sure to follow me and Mason Cable Network on all our social medias to keep up on all the cool things that we both do. And I will see you all next time.